bad. There we go. Hello, everyone. What's going on? Zach, Troy, <gasps> and special guest. Woo, doggies. Oh, man. <laughs> John, John, Zach, Troy, and the fire lizard. And the fire lizard. The flaming <laughs> lizard. I do love that logo, by the way. That's Slick. pretty cool. Though. Oh, that, that, if, if that doesn't end up a, as a tattoo on somebody in your crew, then somebody's <laughs> missing an opportunity. I was going to say, it looks like a good board design. Surf or yeah. skate. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like a, uh, it, that, that, it belongs on a dude with a t shirt, and he's got like his, the, uh, the sleeves have been cut off, and he's got a, a, a necklace with shark teeth. Like in my <laughs> head. I don't, I don't know. That's, uh, but it, I like it. The shark teeth are on brand. You know? yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, uh, we've already got some viewers out there, so thank you to, uh, Alien Conglomeration, Alien Gathering, Alto, another TT viewer, Larb Strong, Lori Pub, Lurks, and Ulysses. Oh, wow. Look at that. that. I'm getting I'm getting worried with the uh, the alien contingent, right? <laughs> but you know what? They're probably yeah. Well, they're, they're out they're, there. I mean, they're. Mm. I don't. I don't want. I don't. I don't want to get probed. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, mm. Also, thank you to um, our our hangout moderator Gabriel. Appreciate you. Uh, and we had Chaos Eight, our friend Andrew, hanging out for our Gloomhaven stream earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, special thanks to him, even though he was um, he was ignored for a little while. Um, <laughs> we were a little bit. We were a little bit. We were just a, a skosh preoccupied. We we were intent on winning, and we still you, lost. You, yeah. you were you were intent on death, we, and we lost by one. There was one enemy left, and oh. it was just a bad. It was attrition is what ended up getting us a loss of resources. Yeah. Yeah, and mistakes. Attrition and mistakes. That's, well, sure, but I mean, like, what yeah, the game is absolutely game. brutal in that you're not allowed to make mistakes. If you don't make the most out of every single action on every single turn, you will lose, just by varying degrees. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Jake, I appreciate you hanging out with us. <laughs> no. and, uh, and the complaining continues. For and that the game. complaining <laughs> continues. Continues. We're gonna give uh, we're gonna give up, folks a few minutes to hang uh, to pop in like Girk here um, before we before we dive in. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> Anybody been doing anything cool or get anything cool that they want to talk about before we uh, go live with the recording? I got the missing box. Oh, nice! Congratulations. <laughs> I got the missing box. Um, okay. 3D printing, so that's that's been cool. Yeah, um, Troy's been going ham on 3D printing, from what I see. Holy man. Toledo! Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've been uh, doing a little bit of that myself. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. I, uh, you know, the Blade Runner RPG has uh, uh, got me, you know, super hyped again. And so I went back uh, this week and rewatched both of the Blade Runner movies. Um, back to back? Back to back, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. That's yeah. commitment. That's a commitment yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, every, as like I said in chat, like every time I go back and watch them, I'm always prepared to be disappointed. Like I always walk in being like, this is the time when I see the things that other people see that makes them not care about. Mm-hmm. And every time, I'm like, no, these are great movies. I don't know what. Well, I, I think, you're approaching it incorrectly because I don't think it's you're going to see what others see that makes mm. them disappointed. I think what it is for them is they're not seeing ah uh, something. The, the oh, yeah. brilliance, yeah. Mm. They're not seeing because like you know you're going to go into like Blade Runner. And you're going to sit down and watch a movie where it's like action packed and laser beams and explosions and robots and stuff, but it's not. It's not. No. And I think that's probably one of people's issues with it. Yeah. So if, if you want disappointment, I would encourage everyone to go watch uh, Willie's Wonderland. Willie's Wonderland? What is this? Yeah. It's a, it's a legit movie. It's it's one of Nicolas Cage's uh, horror movies. Oh. oh boy, 
So I'm sure it, you chewed up every freaking scene of that movie. Oh, this is a recent movie. Okay. No, he has no lines. Is it just no him lines. going, oh, ah, oh, <laughs> the entire time? <laughs> the, the, oh. there, there's a few of those, <laughs> but no, mostly, mostly it's like, it's, it's not zero. It's not zero. There are not zero. Yeah, yeah, Mo- yeah. Most, most of it is this. Okay. All right. For our podcast. Oh, I know we're not recording yet, but for our podcast, it's Troy staring at the camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that's all he did. People will have conversations with him. And it's like, blah, 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 blah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I thought you I thought you knew what I, you know where I was going with that. And they just it's like they had to pay him by the word. They, yeah. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> well, that's Nick, the thing. Nick, we just he, want you to be uh set dressing. Thanks. He was the producer. Hmm. He he bought the script because he didn't want anybody messing with it. Hmm. Is it some weird indie thing or what? It's gotta be. Yeah, because it was like uh, it was like it was made for like five million dollars. Um, it is very much. They they say it's not, but it definitely is. It's very much influenced by uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, now, okay. hang, now hang on. It says it's a good cross between Cabin in the Woods and A Fistful of Dollops. What? That that sounds right up my alley. I'm not uh, gonna well, lie. Well, Fistful of Dollars is a great movie. And Cabin, Cabin in the Woods is, is a really great. good movie too. I yeah. personally like it. Some people don't get it. That's fine. Especially which, the which, which one's which one is Cabin in the Woods? Cabin in the Woods is like a it's a uh, anti expectations horror movie. It it's kinda, the horror. It, it's like a horror comedy. Thing. Is it the Eli Roth thing with the flesh eating virus or whatever? No, no, that's no. terrible. That's uh, okay. Whew, thank I know which one you're talking about. I was going to leave this cabin podcast. Fever. That's Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever. Okay. Somebody. Oh, okay. Really quick. Sorry. Man. Cabin I'm, in the I'm, Woods. Spoil it real quick. Sorry. Yeah, cabin okay. Because okay, okay, I'm going to go on a tangent. Go ahead. Yeah. Cabin in the Woods is the movie about the. Uh, it's set up like a horror movie, but then you find out that it's all in like this science fiction like bubble. And there's an underground facility where they're like spoilers. They're monsters and things yeah. like that. I said spoilers. You did, but I'm gonna say it again, just in yeah. case. All yeah. right. Because it is a really good movie. It, it's really, really good. But that's okay. So Cabin Fever though okay. is yes, is the uh, Eli Roth. Somebody Pancakes! somebody yeah. swore up and down that it was like the greatest horror movie that they'd ever seen. And I'm like, well, I really respect this person's opinion on things like this. So okay, we'll watch it. That movie was terrible. I I hope. I, I hated hope that movie. The next time you saw that person, you took off your flip flop and <laughs> smacked him across their mouth, like a like a good abuela, and just like beat him senseless with it. My goodness, that movie was absolutely. Oh man, it, it did not meet the hype. One, but minute. I will say, they they do take some influence from like Fistful of Dollars because you know the limited, you know, not saying anything, but basically what it is, Nicolas Cage is you. Like when you're playing a video game, you know how your character never speaks. Uh-huh. That's what it is. It's you're uh-huh. supposed to be the Nicolas Cage character, and it is totally. He's in a video game because he drinks this stuff called punch. It's an energy drink, and he'll have a he'll have a fight. His his alarm will go off on his watch. He goes into the kitchen and he pulls out a punch and look 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 plays some play some pinball, like a little mini game inside the game, and then goes back out and beats up a, it's bizarre. You know what I love? You know what I love? I love that you are neck deep in this Willy's Wonderland description, yeah. and Ulysses is like, why are we talking about this? <laughs> <laughs> why are we talking about bad when we could be talking about good? Yeah, yeah. Right. He, he's not done. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not letting go. I do yeah. have another bad movie that came out recently, or one that I just didn't like, and okay. but I liked parts of it, but didn't like Halloween it. Halloween Kills. Nope. Can we not talk about that? What was that? Nope. Halloween Kills. Nope. Nope. Oh. I, I don't know what you just said. It's fine. I didn't hear the his words coming out. No. Uh, no. We. I watched um, uh, Rescue Rangers with my kids this weekend. Oh. And so it was good in that it was kind of like a Roger Rabbit Easter egg thing where there were like mm-hmm. hot, cool little like nice little nods to different cartoons, not just. Disney cartoons. There were Comedy Central cartoons, some MTV stuff. Like Butthead was in there as like he had like a there was a park bench with his face on it. It was like Butthead for a Ameri- uh, president or something like that in it. Which all of that was fine, but that was the only good part about the movie. 
the movie mm. itself was I didn't like it like at all. So mm. yeah, that's so there you go. So that's my opinion on Rescue Rangers for no one out there that cared. So. <laughs> That's what people come for. That is what they come for. We're, not really. Not probably. caring? Yeah. Oh, look, that, something else that I just don't give a crap about. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we could count on you. That's right. That's what I'm here for. Oh, man. Jeez. Well, do you think we've given Chad enough time? We can. I think we, I think we have... Uh... If, if they're still here after all of that, then yeah, we better probably, we probably ever get started right, on the episode. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, Jake, let's do this thing. Uh, here we go in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Geekscant, the home of RPG goodness and general tomfoolery. My name is Zach and the hosts joining me this evening are uh, the Dwarven DM, John Christian. Kazad Sakut, my friends. And the Dapper DM, Troy Sandler. Because I'm Gesundheit. And then we, we've got a guest joining we us as well. We have uh, Jake or Jacob from Fire Lizard Games. Wally Ho. Oh, hey. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I hope, I hope Jake was just in there going, oh. wait for it. Wait, wait for, for it. it. Oh, I was. And Oh, right right from from oh, That's awesome. God. The oh. only thing that would have been better is if you would have yodeled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a skilled yodeler. <laughs> yeah. Why? I was going to say, that couldn't be any worse than Troy. I've, yeah. I've set the bar so low. <laughs> he sounds I more mean, like a dwarven Ned Flanders whenever he does it. <laughs> hey, diddly ho, neighbor. <laughs> Hi, diddly ho. Hi, diddly ho. Oh my gosh. Well, well Jake, uh, uh, thank you first and foremost for hopping on. Uh, that makes me feel good. It makes us feel good. Anytime somebody pops in and says, Hey, I've got a thing to talk about. Um, can I be on your show? And of course we said, absolutely. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Absolutely. Right on. So, uh, Jake, uh, we were talking a little bit in the in the pre-show and even in the pre-live, um, you uh, you are a, a, a section of a conglomerate called uh, Fire Lizard Games, uh, but you and I have known each other for about a decade now, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, like 2012. Uh, like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2012 sounds about right. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you and I both uh, started our RPG uh business journey about the same time as well i think yeah um so we've kind of had parallel paths in that way um but i don't know how much our audience knows of all the different things that you've been working on over there so before we dive into uh the project that we're going to talk about tonight uh do you mind giving our audience a little background on on yourself and fire lizard uh yeah we uh you know we haven't done nearly as much as uh you have with uh you know world of game design and uh before that uh bite-sized gaming but uh yeah we uh the first thing we produced was a little uh i it's not really necessarily gmless it's more like everyone's the gm type game mm -hmm. uh where you use cards and get the cards dictate uh what kind of scene that you have and stuff based on the the suit type um and that is called basic hard pg um mm -hmm. that uh was successfully funded i don't know uh, too long ago i think it was 2018 um and then we ran a little uh uh had a little novelette that uh that was put out Ooh. um i actually had to use a pen name that was actually something i had wrote uh because it was ah. it was real dark uh, and I was working for a school district at the time. I was like, I don't think I want anybody <laughs> knowing that I wrote this. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I can't let this get out. Someday I'd like to run for office. That's right. right. That's right. That, yeah. that was that was examination, right? Yes, examination, uh, cool. which was like a dystopian uh, future type thing. It, it, I won't lie; it was heavily influenced by uh, things like Warhammer Forty Thousand. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's uh, 
that was one of my works. Um, we also put out a little uh, uh, kind of Delta Green uh, monster that's like a freebie on drive through. It's called Lurker of Ling. Um, and uh, it's actually gotten quite a bit. Just wish I, we were getting paid for it. Uh, but <laughs> uh, And then uh, my most recent thing, I think, was when I put out a little novel called uh, Earth Reprisal, which um, was inspired by the system we've actually been working on now and setting. So hmm. Ooh, that's awesome. That's cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Earth Reprisal. Yep. Interesting. Okay, cool. So, so, so first off, I did not know about Earth Reprisal. I knew about the other thing. So where could, where could Zach go to get Earth Reprisal if, uh, if he was interested? You can go to uh, drive through uh, fiction or it'll pop up on drive through RPG if you start typing it in, but uh yeah, yeah, you can just uh, find it there. Um, I think the only difficult thing that people who have read it have is the pronunciation of the names, because I tried to go with fairly non-human sounding names. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you're good at plugging in, you know, your own, uh, what you think that name is pronounced, then this will be the book for you. If you have difficulty with that, you know, then, uh, uh, then there's a solution for that, and it is... Uh, hopefully an audiobook that I'm hoping to put out here pretty soon. Um, oh, very I've, cool. Uh, yeah, I've done some recordings for it. It's just trying to edit together is going to be a bear, and I got more on my plate than uh, uh, to deal with uh, soon. So <laughs> might have to hold off a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I'm going to clarify for folks just in case, because uh, not everybody's going to look online like I did. Um, Earth Reprisal is spelled U R T H. Yes. And that's going to tie in when we talk about something else later. Mm -hmm. But Earth Reprisal. Cool. And it is yeah. on. I've, I've got it here on uh, Drive Through Fiction. Awesome. Nice. Uh, sweet. Okay. Uh, very good. So you've been really doing a lot of different things, what it sounds like. We've got a, a, a card RPG. We've got a, 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 like a novella. We've got a novel. Um, and, now, and we've got some stuff for Monster of the Week, which is awesome. Um, so now we've got something new, something different. Um, talk to us, talk to me a little bit about Savage Earth, the role-playing game. Okay, uh, so uh, I would like John specifically, um, if you could, uh, close your eyes and uh, I want you to think about uh, dwarves. Mm. I'd like for you to think about uh, Dragonlance. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez. And uh, I want you to know this game is nothing like that. So. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, oh, I son of a bitch, this. you've got me. I like this guy. <laughs> you know what? I love how he baited me with Lolly Ho. Oh, Just yeah. so he could toss me right into the pit full of punji sticks. He got he got you to close, his, close your eyes and... Oh, man. I was like... <laughs> yeah that's well okay that's cool yes. yeah it's, uh, <laughs> that's cool no don't get me wrong Dragonlance is a great setting and all that but mm -hmm. uh th mm -hmm. there isn't there isn't one single theme that you know hold, holds everything together like Dragonlance which is a huge uh boon to that setting for sure mm -hmm. but uh but yeah it it uh totally different setting though for sure totally. <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> like I'm waiting for it. Well, yeah, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the next one now. Yeah, fool, fool me, fool me once. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. Fool me twice. Right. Shame on uh, you. Right. <laughs> uh, so fool me thrice. Deja vu. It's fine. Go ahead. Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, so Savage Earth is. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to it. So I'll try and really give you a little elevator pitch on the setting. Um, but it's. Uh, basically kind of like a very primitive stone age setting um, where most of the monsters in the game are uh, basically prehistoric creatures from normal earth, you know, E A R T H in this case. Um, but U R T H is definitely not E A R T H. <laughs> so uh, you got like uh, a, a lot of anthropomorphized, uh, 
uh, animals uh, that are mm. the sentients is what we call them. So there's a lot of playable races. That's cool. Um, we also tried to make their uh, like their kind of racial abilities and stuff to really reflect uh, the uh, the animals that they kind of represent. Like you know, for mm. instance, uh, you know, we've got a uh, this uh, sentient called the Cobus. Um, which is based off, oh, largely off the Tarsier. I don't know if you guys know what the Tarsier is. Um, it's T A R S I E R. It's a little primate that lives in uh, uh, Polynesia, kind of uh, little islands yeah. and stuff. Hmm. Okay. And uh, they are, are you know, they're basically arboreal, uh, and that reflects hmm. you know climb bonuses and stuff like that in the game. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm getting a little too granular here, but uh, no, 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 I love that. So like okay. pr- prints, all tales, tr- tree dwellers, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and they got a, uh, you know, uh, bonuses. You know, they have dark vision because uh, that animal sees almost as well as any other uh, uh, nocturnal animal there is, really. Um, hmm. And then another example would be the uh, tortuga, that is a. Hmm. Uh, uh, definitely not a ninja turtle, but uh, That's right. <laughs> definitely not. Um, but is a uh, turtle humanoid that uh, you know uh, is uh, actually large size, um, and so it's slow lumbering, uh, but hits like a Mack truck, and also has a uh, uh, some armor, obviously. So you know, we really just mm-hmm. try to reflect these these racial uh, traits as how they kind of would be portrayed in a in the real world a little bit um right on i love that you you had me like so no it's not dragon lance but man (laughs) i love um i think one of the things that i read it read about about the what you're working on is it is it's primitive and it's this very primal raw setting right and so as a result there's a lot of crafting that's necessary that's that's it right so is that a is that a pretty big part of the game is the the crafting system that you come up with or is that an actual system or how does that work exactly oh yeah and it's it's uh it functions a lot like uh skill systems generally do but we detail everything out to the Mm. point where anything that's in the equipment chapter will also in the items profile tell you what components make that item and then what the dc is to craft that item that's cool yeah i love Uh, I love a good like I, again. I love the the survival aspect of it, and then starting from like a, I've been I played another game not too long ago, uh, the forest, which is that's the, like ninety percent of the game is going to be crafting something. The other ten percent is trying to escape screaming, screeching cannibals that are that are on the <laughs> island with you. But the I love like how noodly do you get? Is it just like two leather and one stick kind of thing, or what is that? Not to give too much away uh, too early here, but how do you how do you kind of plot that out? Yeah, so uh, let's say that you're crafting a spear. You would need, uh, I believe it's a large, you know, depending on the size of the spear, but I think mm-hmm. it's a large haft, you know, which is just, you know, the mm-hmm. pole, you know. Um, and then I think like a medium-sized rock and then um, some sinew. Um, and that's how you make a spear, and that's how you make a spear in real life too, you yep. know, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget and, the moose poop glue. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nature's adhesive. Yes. Yeah, we uh, we don't have moose poop glue, although uh, that is actually would probably be a component in real world in the real world. But, you might uh, be able. To, I don't, there's a there's a picture of, of uh, some some friends around a campfire on your uh, Kickstarter page here. I think the 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 one with the goatee with the thing would probably produce some pretty uh adhesive glue (laughs) yeah that's uh, a bell there Uh, so you could uh you know substitute for the for moose with that yeah that's a velky there that's uh velky yeah kind of a baboon you know uh simian uh it it definitely looks i just gotta say mandrel i'm sorry mandrel (laughs) uh looking through this kickstarter page I I dig in it. No, I'm with I, I'm with John. I like the idea of you know the stripped down nature of it, the the fact that it's you know 
uh, prehistoric primeval. Mm-hmm. You're crafting stuff. It's all survival. Um, and the, the, the fact that you've got all these different uh, sentience, and I like the use of that word. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I like that too. In that main picture where you've got the different uh, dinos and stuff you being used as like uh, you know anim- pack animals or, or or whatnot and the the brontosaurus like creatures in the background mm, it yeah it has a really cool feeling to it like what 10,000 BC mm-hmm. or something yeah. like that yeah yeah uh yeah no i appreciate that that's that's a compliment that's uh a little bit yeah pretty much kind of what we're going for there uh just with like more sentience essentially more yeah. races well I'm, uh, I'm still stuck on oh well, let me say one more thing here so I, i'm stuck on one thing i love the idea of it's not necessarily the setting it's just kind of like the byproduct of the setting though is where yes there's a crafting system but what that ends up doing is the things that you fight and you kill you don't look loot their outsides or the things that they're carrying you're gonna have to use their carcasses for something that's cool I like that. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. I, like, I like the idea of I killed, like, you see this hammer that I created or this ha- axe that I created and the stone head. I got this stone head while I was on XYZ Mountain, and I've got this bone from the bone of some primal boar, or some dire boar, or something like that. This is its femur. You know, that kind of, there's a story oh, to yeah. the thing that you craft, too. That's a, that's, a part of, that's a part of the narrative. Yeah, that's one of the last little puzzle pieces we're trying to... Uh... Uh, fit into place right now is the because we want to make it relatively simple Mm -hmm. um, but yeah having a legendary item uh, type status that can get assigned to different weaponry and stuff like that Uh, so yeah uh, yeah one of uh, the people that we just recently brought in uh, Matt Zablodel who was a a good friend of of the group uh, going quite a ways back he was there for the first like pseudo game of this that we played like literally 15 years ago or something um and uh he was like i feel like you guys need like a a legendary weapon type thing and that's mm. it and i was like yeah we definitely do now that you say that like we need you know uh, a method of like having these exceptional components that uh that uh make things um which th- that is uh something you touched on there that i wanted to bring up about the crafting is that we also have a thing called a gathering check, which not mm-hmm. hunter gather, but uh, to gather from an animal. So, mm-hmm. you know, gathering it's hide to make armor um, or, you know, potentially other things, uh, bones, meat, actually meat is kind of the gold standard in the game because mm-hmm. there isn't really metallurgy or if there is, it's incredibly sparse. Um, and so uh, meat is kind of like, well, it has value everywhere. So this is uh, right. this is what we're basing everything on. Uh, so do you have things mm-hmm. like uh, like curing meats and things like that, so that they have longevity to them? It's not like you know I've got I have a haunch. The haunch is only going to last for a couple of days, as opposed to smoking it, curing it with some kind of a salt or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, we have food prep skill. That's cool. Uh, like yeah, that. which is yeah, that's uh, like I look I, ever since I was a Boy Scout. And a a Cub Scout, Boy Scout, and I I went outside all the time. So that kind of stuff that that's an itch that I'm always looking to scratch. Of like the, like the again, the the building blocks of civilization are all built on the back of, like the next thing that built, that was built upon, right? And it it always start. It all started from stone, and uh, and bone and skin, effectively. Yep, yep, and that's uh, that. That's kind of the the pillar of the crafting system right there, because we, we do have a, and I, I'll, di- I'll diverge this, uh, a little bit of a spoiler, uh, but, uh, basically anytime that someone gets crit and they're wearing armor, uh, their armor degrades just a little bit nice. by one point. So, uh, that's, you know, uh, a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? something that helps influence players decisions like, Oh, I need to get this repaired because mm-hmm. it still has the, you know, Dex negative, uh, that it had, but now it's worse. Uh, so I gotta mm-hmm. get that repaired. Yeah, like if that. they critically fail with a weapon, it's not always, but there is a chance that it'll break. And then of course, well, you gotta make a new one. Um, how many components can you salvage from the old one? Um, that kind of stuff. So, and I like economies. Like when we were talking about yeah. that too, like economies that are built on like a trade or barter system, 
and a, like a variance of exchange in one one region or zone you know uh, there uh, there may be a bit demand for feathers or there may be a demand for uh, shell that's because it's not near a coastline and so it's not evil is easily accessible to like giant sea turtles where you can get it use the shell for it or something like that right. or teeth or something like that right it's like I, I like that too right I think that's that kind of comes encompasses the same thing but the further back that you go the to me the I mean, it's the less the more nebulous systems become to survive and to mm-hmm. to organize and to uh, interact with other cultures and civilizations that are out there. That's a really that's a cool dynamic. That's like just beyond. I'm going to all I'm trying to do is trying to keep the Tyrannosaurus Rex from from eating me today. Kind right. of a kind of a vibe. There's more to it than that. There's like a socioeconomic um, aspect to it that I don't think gets touched on a lot in games these mm. days. No, because right. the fact that the gold in this is also your food yeah oh, so yeah. you're you're giving up you're really giving up something of worth yeah absolutely well and it's, that's something too right one of the things that is dragon lancey about it ha huh, is that in dragon lance gold doesn't really have any worth at all because it doesn't have any utilitarian purpose to it and so steel is the most important thing that's why that's the currency and so utility is what like it, like the fact that like it is a late civilization thing to put gemstones and gold and things like that, like up on a pedestal for of worth and value. Right. And so, and, uh, so I, to me, I like that more raw, that early era examination of what actual va- value of an object actually is. It's about, can it help me survive? Isn't that what uh, the Spartans money was, was like big hunks of metal or yeah. something? Yeah. 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 Hmm. So, because it had, you know, I don't know if it's bronze or whatever they carried around, but yeah, not not gold because gold is useless in battle. <laughs> it's <laughs> right? heavy and it's and it's soft. You can't make a weapon out of it. So I mean, okay. like, so so it's it, it has less and less. It's metal, and that's really like the only thing that's any good about it is that it's metal. At least it's not a rock, you know. Right. Mm. Yeah. It can get shiny if we polish it enough. This thing will shine. That we then we can do something with that. Let me let me walk us back a couple steps uh, just to kind of touch on something that I don't think we covered at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Jake, one of the things that you talk that you say right from the beginning is this is uh, the first part of this we talked about a lot, which is this is an original prehistoric and Stone Age fantasy setting. Mm-hmm. But then you say Pathfinder 2 and 5e inspired system. And then if you scroll down on the Kickstarter page, and by the way, if you're listening to this and hear us talk about a Kickstarter page, uh, we got a jake was gracious enough to give us a preview of it um and we'll give you all the links to go follow and and see when it goes live uh here at the end of the episode but um if you scroll down on the preview page here it says that it's a totally self-contained game or everything you'll need to play your character and also run the game as a game master can you talk a little bit about the idea of being inspired by those two systems and what you were inspired by but also how you deviated and obviously the crafting system and and um gathering systems are are unique but yeah so uh pretty much how i have it stated there um is that we had initially built this kind of on the backbone of pathfinder 1 and 3.5 but they are so there's too many action types is like the main thing like Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're cycling through like six different action types it's like okay I use this one. Can I use this one now? Uh, and I got to go read that rule. Oh, I can. What about this next one? You know, there's too many. So we pretty much narrowed it down to three standard full round and, uh, and uh, uh, free actions, um, which mm-hmm. is definitely what Pathfinder 2E is doing. Um, obviously, 5E has stripped down the rules quite a bit, too. And we're trying to, trying to go along in that same vein. Um, mm-hmm. But the one thing that we weren't super excited about with uh 5e was uh their skill system with the proficiencies it seems like you know your character's pretty locked in uh you know early on Mm. uh into their skill Mm. tree basically um and that's i don't know that's a little bit of a bummer it feels like if you especially if you you know took a a proficiency in something that you're not using all that often Mm. um Mm. Or you're a paladin and you automatically get two or like one of five or two of five different skills or something like that. But like later on down the line, 
Like you're telling me this guy hasn't gotten any better at history since right. then. Or, like, it, it, there's no, it doesn't scale any better. Like you're hey, always going to be a history derp, like forever. There's, there's no time to that's to, true to, to take night classes when you're uh, saving the <laughs> <Night> world. <classes. laughs> there's, there aren't community colleges in uh, in. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, like strict, well, yeah. strict saving, but that's you know. Well, not even not even to mention you know. Uh, as that character is going along, they're likely reading books and things like that. You think that, yeah, that might help, but it doesn't. Yeah. Depends uh, on what you're reading. I mean, they could be like you know uh, Harlequin romance novels. That's what. It, that's what it, <laughs> you're, you're not learning anything. That's the that's the right. true escapism for an adventurer. Right? Yeah. Yep. You, you talk to anybody's mom, and they're going to tell you that those Harlequin novels, you know, especially the period piece ones, have great historical. <laughs> historical value <laughs> the knowledge it's there for you to tap into right? that's, that's really accurate I, that's what I, I need it for yeah. that helped me get a question right on Jeopardy once <laughs> yeah, that's right. no, okay so uh, I like that I like the fact like, so you, you came up with your own system yeah so Could, yeah the, tell us about that yeah the skill system actually borrows a little bit from uh, World of Darkness um, okay. where okay. you're basically filling in a bubble uh, for each rank that you go up in, and the rank costs so many points to get there. Uh, and that rank is worth so much, you know. Uh, uh, so when you fill in the bubble, you'll know, you know, I've got a plus one now, or I've got a plus mm. uh, okay. three now, six, ten, fifteen, it literally scales like that. Um, so, you know, you're just filling in a bubble and then adding in whatever your ability modifier is to that thing. And so it's not as complex as 3.5 or mm-hmm. uh, pathfinder but not as uh, stripped down as 5e um hmm. and that kind of that same concept kind of you know uh made its way into our uh magic system as well where you're uh you know you've got your what we call spectrums instead of domains you fill in your bubble and then the bubble you know rank one and anything basically gets you uh uh, well, it gets you a rite, uh, which is basically more of like a cantrip, a uh, spell, and then a ritual. Um, mm. r- rituals being something that you kind of prepare ahead of time. And uh, mm. we also kind of want to put an emphasis on, like, what is your character's ritual? You know, uh, mm. we're going to have this sheet that spellcasters, we encourage them to fill out, but of course, you know, whether or not they do, um, but of like, you know, what is important to your character based on, you know, their spectrums. Like I had a character that uh, I played recently that uh, had uh, uh, some ranks in fire. So his ritual of replenishment, how he gets his mana back because we have mana in this game instead, um, is that he's got to, uh, and he also had ranks in uh, uh, food prep is they had to make a nice meal essentially and then leave it out in the sun for the sun god basically so okay yeah so now is it is it like a, i think Mitch has a really good question here is, is it like a specialization in a thing or is it a, is it a, does it create like is there a generality that's associated to that kind of the, the to the ritual uh the, there is for the ritual of replenishment, that's the one that everybody gets, no matter what spectrum you have. Uh-huh. Uh, that one's very generalized, but for the other spectrums, it uh, I won't go too deep into that because I one of the few things I didn't uh, create or have a really big hand in creating was the magic system. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, there are rituals associated that give you different boons essentially gotcha. for each uh, for each spectrum that you have. Um, but then at rank two, you get a better version of that first rank and uh, uh, a rank two spell, essentially. Mm, that's cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah, let me ask you this too. So uh, on that, what made that what that made me think of immediately is how if we were talking about how crystallized skills and things like that become uh, leveling. Do you have a more of a skill based system where it it evolves in in bits and pieces? Or do you have these milestones that happen to the character kind of like in a level where now you get a bunch of extra stuff or you get more stuff every time you hit these milestones? Or do you do it like plug in a couple of experience points here and there and your this one skill goes up? Uh, yeah, uh, 
you, you have milestones. You have to, you might end up having to even bank points between levels to get higher ranks. Cause mm. by the time you get rank five in any one skill, um, you're, you're going to, you will have dumped a lot of skill points to get to that point, And then uh, another big dump of skills to get to the, the mm. final rank there. Gotcha. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean that's that's so, essentially. I guess let me make sure I answer, I'm asking the question right. So like, let's say you've got a skill like gathering, right? So mm. the gathering is is when you get experience points or whatever like the the um, upgrade or enhancement currency is for a character. Do you can you put it directly into gathering and like I'm just going to focus on gathering until I hit like whatever the max rank is for that one? Or does does do you get like everything all at once? Like do you get it like ten? points at the end of every session or how does that work for like for for uh, upgrading your character we uh since it's a survival setting and we kind of have a uh i don't know if anybody here has ever played uh the revised second edition of star wars oh yeah, yeah. Mm. okay uh you know how like they've got two pools of hit points one mm-hmm. that's kind of like getting bumped and scraped and the other is mm-hmm. like killing you mm-hmm. yeah. uh, we kind of have the same thing so there's the potential to to get killed relatively easily easily in this i mean we've got uh some get out of jail free cards for that but uh, mm. but because of that you know uh we have decided <laughs> that like the base just a blanketed easy thing for ple- uh gms to do is every three sessions or if there's a milestone that uh you know like a quest that your characters have been on and mm-hmm. completed those will be level ups essentially gotcha. so okay. so that you can you know level up relatively quickly because of that you know potent that potential danger i mean it faces you in any system but uh mm-hmm. you know and this it could potentially be a little more deadly but we like i said we have you know get out of jail free cards called favor points where you uh you know it, it works uh i'm trying to think of a system uh, have you guys ever heard of like the Dark Heresy or uh, Oh yeah, Death Watch systems? Mm-hmm. Well, they've got Oh yeah, from Forty K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got uh, what are those called? I know you're, like the, the there's I know what you're talking about, but I don't, I don't yeah. remember what they're called specifically. The, the points that you can burn to like really save your character's life. Yes, uh, there's all kinds of uses for it uh, that we'll have listed out, but uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, it you know kind of bar- bars a little bit from. Uh, 5e as well having like inspiration that type of stuff Mm -hmm. as well um uh, man Uh, there's something i want to touch on real quick about the skills oh um so there's one uh one thing that we wanted to do to uh also set us apart a little bit is that you run into a point in a game all the time where the GM asks for a role to do a specific task and you're kind of like, well, this skill is kind of adjacent to what you're asking for, even though it's not the skill Mm -hmm. check that you're asking for. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do is that, uh, any untrained check, as long as it doesn't have these, uh, rank limiters, essentially, uh, skill rank limiters, uh, for the type of thing that you're trying to do. Like say, say you've got, uh, a dead body and you're trying to figure out uh how long they've been dead you know normally that'd be a treat injury check or a heal check in 5e mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but if say you do a lot of gathering and you have high ranks and gather you're like well i've dealt with taking stuff from animals all the time you know mm-hmm. i probably have a gauge of decomposition levels and stuff like that so you would still get to apply your full bonus to that uh that check but you get disadvantage essentially Mm. um so that it kind of opens up that like that negotiation that happens between gms and players all the Mm. time you know yeah that's that's interesting i like that yeah interesting uh so jake let's talk a little bit about the kickstarter itself um so you told us it's going live on june 7th and you told me (laughs) that you are tying that Pick it, you picked that date in particular because it coincides with the release of another uh, prehistoric themed property. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a new Jurassic World coming out, uh, and that's that Friday. So we were like, well, we'll launch 
you know, the Tuesday before. So, uh, because uh, there's a lot of dinosaurs on this page and, uh, you know, there's other prehistoric creatures on there too. I think it'll help uh, catch some people's eyes as they're getting, uh, you know, amped up to go watch that. Heck yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so so you're going to launch um, uh, June 7th, which is a Tuesday. Um, and uh, I, I don't want to, I know some of this is still in flux here, but is it all right if I give a generality of what people can expect from this Kickstarter? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing here is that you're going to have, of course, digital PDF options, but also looking at a full color hardcover edition of the book. You've got a lot of VTT uh, components that you're bringing to the table, and also STL files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I've I've been designing. Uh some 3d models uh for a while now uh i just don't have the greatest software um <laughs> to i have zbrush core which is basically zbrush except when you go to export the stl your mm -hmm. your model melts because it doesn't have enough polygons <laughs> so <laughs> uh, i want that full version <laughs> uh right on but uh yeah all the stuff that i have here though is fairly low polygon count so it's it's all pretty doable um with what i've got now but if we fund and we start hitting some of these stretch goals i don't think it'll be a problem getting that that upgrade in software and really giving some people something really well polished um but uh yeah uh yeah we got a lot of vtt stuff i mean there's as of right now there's 17 sentients there will be 18. um devin knight i don't know if you guys are familiar with him on roll 20. Uh, he does a lot of the, uh, uh, like anytime that you get a lot of free options mm -hmm. on Roll20. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he, he's done all of the ones that are listed there right now. And uh, he will finish out all the sentience and nice. uh, some of the beasts as well. And, uh, and hopefully we can get him to do all of them, which would be really cool. Right on. That's cool. That's super handy. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm super excited for that, by the way. Sweet. Uh, the last thing that I had on my list that I wanted to point people towards, um, obviously, uh, you can go look up Fire Lizard Games, and we're going to post links. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and post your Facebook link into our uh, live stream right now. But um, one thing that I would point people towards is you have a Savage Earth podcast from last year, right? Yeah, which unfortunately we did have to... Uh stop because we had to make games and editing yes. a actual play is a nightmare <laughs> yes uh-huh but there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on there if people are interested in the setting they're interested in what you guys are doing i think um that's a that's a great place for them to go uh, see some more of your content and you you even have i think a, a q a and things um towards the end so oh yeah yeah so that might be a cool place that's under fire lizard media Yep. yep. Cool. Fellas, is there anything else that uh, you wanted to make sure to, to talk with Jake about? No, I mean, I, I think everything has been answered. I am digging, like I said before, I'm digging the idea of it. I like the idea of just having it like raw and primal and, yeah. and what is that going to look like? What kind of adventures can you dig into for that? You know, it, it's, it's like, you know, you've got Forgotten Realms, Dungeons and Dragons kind of setting the high magic and high action and all that stuff. And then you've got, mm -hmm. take a step down to Conan and the sword, sword and sandal type thing. Mm -hmm. And magic is more of a, a primal force that can be horrible in, in its usage. And then, you, then with this, you're taking another step down. <laughs> To where every I mean, you want to you want a weapon? Well, you better find a rock and kill that thing so you can take its teeth and make it into something because otherwise you got nothing. Right. It just it just adds another layer of of simplicity with complexity. Mm -hmm. Well, it drops down a little bit, and you're just trying to find that that mix of of how you want your your game to go 
And I'm really liking that idea. Yeah, and I think I like the – as I'm sitting here thinking about it, one of the things that's, that's probably an interesting component that I wouldn't have thought of before is we always talked about – I talked about the building blocks, right, of civilization and culture. Mm-hmm. In this instance, I'm assuming in the world there is no pre-civilization before this. This is the pre-civilization, right? So if that's the case, where are your dungeons, right? The dungeons uh, are – do you have dungeons in this that have been – like because a lot of dungeons are usually like – ruins of past civilizations that have that have decayed or been lost to time and forgotten about yeah the dungeons in this um i mean they could be crafted by any of these sentients but most of them are probably uh crafted by the uh insectoid tar which are oh, that's kind cool. of kind of ant-like um in their society and stuff so you know you never know if some sort of fungus that turned them all into uh zombies has you know, ripped through their civilization, and now you've got this dungeon filled with undead, undead baddies. Oh, so there, there can weird. be dungeon crawls in this, yeah. Yeah. Well, and so what I, what I'm gonna, I was gonna get at next too is like this: that thankfully you didn't commit the cardinal sin of any setting that I know about, or like a new setting that you're trying to incorporate, or a new system. You have an adventure that's gonna be that's gonna be included uh, as oh, a part of the, part of the Kickstarter, right? That yes, is like to me is a critical component. In, yes. in selling the idea of what it is like how, how do I run this I, I like what is what is like the it's not like it has to be the only way of running it but it kind of gives you something to to riff off of you don't even have mm-hmm. to use that adventure but at the very least it gives you the bones and kind of like the diagram of the body uh, about what you can end up using so and it's yeah. uh, you got an act one and two uh, adventure that's incorporated in this too so uh, well done for not committing that sin. That was that was uh, easily avoidable, and you did it. Any level, they get that. Um, yep. But sure. if they want to add on that uh, all the way to the fifth act, they can do that as well. Um, and it is a very guided on rails scenario because you know we didn't have a mountain of time to write it. But mm-hmm. uh, it cool. uh, it's uh, you know that's actually the thing that uh, uh, you guys wanted to ask me about earlier when we oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah thank yeah. you for yeah tell they, tell us the so apparently so before show uh we were talking about how he's you've been listening for a little while and uh there was at least one thing that we as the three boobs that we are influenced <laughs> and, and i weep for you but but what was that thing i'm scared uh yeah uh so i think it was actually something zach had said when he was talking about one of the big things published adventures make is uh, bullet points. Like you're just supposed to try and suss out dialogue from a bullet point. And that is, you know, that can be kind of difficult to do on the spot. Um, mm. So there are no dialogue bullet points in this ge- in this adventure Aha. whatsoever. <laughs> nice, However, yeah. <laughs> it is a ton of dialogue, though. So uh, you know, nice. You get nice. Half, you know, half a dozen in one, six of the other type of thing. <laughs> nice. So, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm awesome. very happy with that. That's cool. That's great. Sweet. Sweet. Awesome. Well, so first and foremost, we'll, we'll be sure to back. Uh, I'd ask you as yes. well, uh, Jake, to make sure you pop into our Discord on the 7th and post a link to your uh, mm-hmm. to your Kickstarter so we our whole group can know that you're you're live. And go ahead and do that, too, um, as soon as you have your uh, your pre-launch page yeah. uh, public and... and get some followers there so oh yeah i definitely appreciate that what uh which one of these channels do i drop it into oh you this? will you will drop it into the uh geeks can't chat channel um is a great one or the crowdfunding corner channel either way so, okay yeah all right well i definitely appreciate that open invitation heck yeah well uh jake thanks again so much uh we're gonna send everybody to at fire lizard games right now on twitter facebook and instagram uh, all the links will be down in the doobly-doo show notes uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast. John Troy, thanks for hanging out. And Take until care. next week, we'll see you next time. Play great games on Earth, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's kind of tough to do it, but uh, it's a dangerous world out there. It is. Stay safe. Yeah. <laughs>